guys and welcome to Heidi Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting and quite fascinating disease and that is smallpox. So let's get started. So what was smallpox? Smallpox was a contagious, disfiguring and often deadly disease that had affected humans for thousands of years. It was caused by the variola virus and was a highly contagious infectious disease which caused infected individuals to develop a fever and a progressive disfiguring skin rash. Smallpox goes down in history as one of the deadliest diseases known to humans and is also the only human disease to have been completely eradicated by vaccination and this has been since 1977. So from this definition of smallpox, we'll see everything is written in the past tense because the disease has actually been eradicated successfully through vaccination over hundreds of years. So from this definition of the disease, we get that it was actually a viral caused disease. So it was a viral infection, which actually caused patients to develop this high fever and this very disfiguring skin rash, which actually developed over the entire surface of the body. So the disease was actually very contagious and spread pretty quickly from one individual to the next and actually goes down in history as being one of the deadliest diseases because the disease actually contributed to the deaths of thousands and thousands of people worldwide. So now that we know what the basics of smallpox was, let's take a closer look at the forms of smallpox. So there were two main forms of smallpox and the more severe form was called the variola major form and this was the most common and was the one of concern. And the other form was called the variola minor form, and this was much less common and much less severe. So the two variants of variola actually differed greatly in their mortality rates, with a 30 to 35% chance of death in the variola major form, and only a 1% chance of death in the variola minor form. So as we can see from this slide, the variola virus actually had two main forms, and that was the variola major form and then the variola minor form. So the variola major form was actually the more deadlier one and the more severe form. It was actually the more common form, which is actually very sad. And patients here had a higher fever and a more extensive skin rash. And in this form, we had a 30 to 35% of death rate. And then the variola minor form, which was much less common in presentation, it was less severe, and here we only had a death rate of 1% or less. And the rash, as well as the fever, was much less severe than in the variola major form. So was smallpox contagious, and how was it spread? So as we mentioned in the slide earlier, smallpox was very contagious, particularly during the first week the person had the rash. And it was most commonly spread through infected droplets of saliva when people coughed or sneezed and the viral respiratory droplets were sprayed into the air. So as we can see, if one had the virus, they could actually cough up or sneeze and all that saliva and nasal fluid droplets, which are full of the viral particles, would actually be sprayed into the air and then can easily be breathed in by someone close by. And in this way, they would contract the disease. So close contact with the sores of the infected person or even contact with contaminated bedding or clothing could also spread the disease. So this is very important. For example, if a child had contracted the disease, any one of their siblings who touched these little sores on their body would actually contract the disease in this way. Or if the child went to school, they could actually end up infecting multiple children in the class. So the disease actually spread not just through these nasal or salivary droplets, but also from direct contact from the skin rash. And the patient would actually remain infectious until the last scab separated from the skin. So here we see the smallpox rash progression. So we see what the rash looks like on day eight and nine of the disease. So we have these pustules which have developed on the entire surface of the skin. And they would actually increase in size and they would be firm and deeply embedded. And then from day 10 to 14, the pustules would dry up and form dark scabs. And around day 20, the scabs would eventually come off, revealing the depigmentated areas of the skin. And until the last scab falls off, that's the only time the patient will become uninfectious, but they will remain infectious until that last scab falls off. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of smallpox. So the first symptoms the patients would present with would be the high fever, chills, headache, severe back pain, 
abdominal pain, and vomiting. And after two to three days, a rash of flat red spots would develop in the mouth and on the face, and shortly thereafter, it would spread to the trunk and the legs, and then the hands and the feet. So these red marks would become filled with pus and then would crust over. And the scabs developed and then fell off after about three weeks. So initially, the rash would start with these red spots, and then they would actually fill up with pus over the following days and then become fully formed pustules. And then they would actually break open ooze viral fluid and then they would scab dry up and the scabs would typically fall off in about three to four weeks. So something very interesting to mention is that 30% of smallpox cases of the variola major type ended up in death. And this typically occurred in the second week of infection. And most survivors had some degree of permanent scarring which could be extensive because as we can see the rash which appears on the skin is quite disfiguring so the actual healing process would be pretty drawn out and they would suffer some permanent scarring. So other deformities could result such as a loss of the lip, nose or ear tissue and blindness could occur as a result of corneal scarring. So there were a lot of complications of the disease in addition to this completely disfiguring skin rash, death occurred in some patients some patients suffered severe deformities, and some patients even went blind due to the corneal scarring. The diagnosis of smallpox. So the clinical definition of smallpox is an illness with an acute onset of fever equal to or greater than 38.3 degrees Celsius, which is about 101 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by that distinctive skin rash characterized by firm, deep-seated vesicles or pustules in the same stage of development without other apparent cause. So when a clinical case was observed, smallpox was confirmed using laboratory tests, and this was done by testing for the smallpox DNA in a sample of fluid from the blisters. So the clinical diagnosis was put based on the history of the patient presenting with fever and then the rash, and then the doctor would analyze these lesions and then put the presumptive diagnosis of smallpox but the diagnosis of the disease could be confirmed by doing a laboratory test and this would be done by taking samples of fluid from the blisters and then exploring them further in a laboratory to test for the variola virus DNA from these samples and in this way the diagnosis could be confirmed. The treatment of smallpox. So treatment of smallpox is basically supportive. It includes fluids, symptom relief and assistance with breathing for example, with a face mask or to supply oxygen, and the treatments to maintain the blood pressure. So because smallpox is a viral infection, we don't use specific antiviral therapies, and of course, antibiotics won't work here. So all we can do is treat supportively, make sure the patient is well rested, well hydrated, and their respiratory efforts are supported greatly. And finally, let's talk a little bit more about the global impact and the eradication of smallpox. So an estimated 300 million people around the world died from smallpox in the 20th century, and the first smallpox immunization was created by a man called Edward Jenner in 1796, but it took about 200 years and a worldwide vaccination program to eradicate the disease completely. So the last naturally occurring case of smallpox was reported in 1977, and in 1980, the World Health Organization actually declared that smallpox had been eradicated. So currently, there is no evidence of naturally occurring smallpox transmission anywhere in the world. So this is actually a great victory for science and medicine and for all of humankind. And much of its success is actually attributed to a man called Edward Jenner, who actually formulated the first vaccine for the smallpox virus. And because of his initiative, we were able to eradicate the disease completely until now. And that brings us to the end of this video on smallpox. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.